Now, when it comes to my Blackmagic Pocket Cinema camera, I absolutely love this camera, but I know that as great as the camera is, it is nothing without pairing it with the right lenses, which is why in this video today, I'm gonna be breaking down the lens choices that I've decided to go with for this camera and why I personally believe that going with prime lenses is better than zoom lenses. Let's run it. What's good creative fam? Brandon Washington here. First of all, if you're brand new to the channel, definitely consider hitting that subscribe button because this channel is all about filmmaking gear, tips, and tutorials. But in today's video, we are taking a look at my lens choice when it comes to shooting with the Blackmagic Pocket Cinema camera. Now, I absolutely love shooting with this camera, but I personally know that it is nothing without the lenses that I choose to go with it. And so picking the lenses was very important first starting off with the types of lenses I wanted to go with. So I decided to go with all EF mount lenses, which meant that in order to get it onto my pocket cinema camera, I had to get a speed booster or adapter. So I decided to go with the Metabone 0.64 XL speed booster. This basically turns this micro four thirds sensor into the look of a full frame sensor. As someone who's been shooting on cameras like the 1DX Mark II and the Sony a7 III, I absolutely love that full frame look. And so I wanted to keep that when going to the Blackmagic Pocket Cinema camera. And this speed booster allowed me to do that. The speed booster is actually really simple. It just goes onto the front of your camera, just like any lens would, and then you just attach your lens to it. This thing is also built like a tank, which means I feel perfectly confident about being able to attach lenses on there like the 70 to 200, or even some of my heavier, smaller lenses, like my 50 millimeter 1.2, onto this camera without any hesitation. Another awesome thing about this adapter is the fact that it not only is going to increase your overall focal range from that typical micro four thirds look, but it also is gonna allow you to let in more light. So for example, I have a lens that actually is a 2.8, but whenever I put it on this camera with the speed booster, it actually turns it into a 1.8 lens. So it's allowing in a whole extra stop of light into the camera, which is really helpful, especially when I'm shooting in those low light situations. So now that we've got the speed booster out of the way, let's actually jump into the lenses that I've chosen to go with, starting from my ultra wide, making our way up to my telephoto lens, and then going into my favorite specialty lens. So when it comes to my wide angle lens of choice or my ultra wide angle lens of choice, that is going to be this guy here. This is the Lawa 12 millimeter zero distortion lens. First of all, I've actually done an entire video on this lens alone. Back when I had the 1DX Mark II and I was using that in 4K with the crop, this was an awesome lens to pair with it. But since shooting on the Blackmagic Pocket Cinema camera, I have found that this lens is still an amazing lens to have. At 12 millimeters and zero distortion, this lens is amazing. Not to mention that it is built like a tank. I mean, it's a completely metal housing built lens. Now, yes, it is a manual lens. However, when it comes to shooting on the Blackmagic Pocket Cinema camera, you're pretty much shooting everything in manual anyway, like your focus. The one thing that this thing does also have is it has a manual clicked aperture. So you are going to have to set your aperture on the lens, but it is a nice small lens that you can add onto your camera. I use this a lot when I'm shooting real estate videos or I'm shooting a lot of stuff on the gimbal. This tends to be an amazing connection with this camera and definitely for something this wide to have zero distortion, this is definitely a lens you should consider. Next up is probably my favorite and my most sharpest lens, probably second sharpest lens I have, and that is the Sigma 35 millimeter 1.4 art lens. This lens here is by far the best 35 millimeter lens I think you can get for the price. Now I've actually compared this lens to the Canon like a couple years ago, and back when I did that review, it was so I could decide which one I wanted to take a look at, and I decided to go with this one strictly because of the price difference, but also because of how sharp it was. I really wish I would've gotten more into the Sigma art lenses way before now, because the amount of money you can save by going with the art lenses is astonishing, and especially because of how good they are and how sharp they are. So if you are someone who's looking for a 35 millimeter lens, I strongly recommend going with the Sigma one. Now the next lens that I have is my 50 millimeter Canon 1.2. Now this is an awesome lens. This is perfect type of lens if you're gonna be shooting a lot of interviews, if you're shooting people that aren't moving around a whole bunch. This lens is not stabilized and neither are any of the other lenses that I've actually mentioned so far, 
But when it comes to just having an amazing sharp lens that develops awesome colors and has great bokeh, this lens is just, it's perfect. For interviews, this is my definitely go-to lens. However, like I mentioned before, it is not stabilized, so I don't really go handheld with this lens very much. But whenever my camera's on sticks and I'm shooting people, this is definitely one of my go-to lenses. Next up, we're gonna skip over this lens for a moment, but we're gonna go to my 70 to 200 Canon L series 2.8 stabilized lens. This is an awesome lens. When it comes to going handheld, this is almost always the lens that I choose to go with. For whatever reason, because of the image stabilization that is built in here and how Canon designed it, this thing is phenomenal. Now, I will say one big caveat about this lens is it doesn't have a really good minimum focal distance, focusing distance, I think that's what they call it, focusing distance. Basically, whenever you're shooting with this lens, you got to back up. Now, when you're shooting with this lens, I almost always shoot with it at about 200 millimeters. The way that it creates this awesome compression of the background and it has this amazing bokeh look to it, this is definitely my go-to lens when it comes to shooting telephoto stuff. I shoot every single Sunday with this lens at my church. It is definitely one of my favorite lenses when it comes to shooting telephoto. All right, and last but certainly not least is this guy here. This is the 100 millimeter Canon macro lens. Now, this is a specialty type lens, but in my opinion, this is a secret dagger type lens. I'm pretty sure this is the most inexpensive L-series lens you can buy. There may be like one or two that are a little bit cheaper than this lens, but if you have not picked up this lens, I strongly, strongly, strongly recommend you grab it. First of all, it is the sharpest lens out of all the lenses I've ever shot with. It's a very close one with this one here, the 35, but this is definitely a little bit sharper. On top of that, it is not just a macro lens. You can back up your camera and still get just some amazing shots with this lens here. But when it comes to getting macro shots and detail shots, nothing is better than this. I use this on weddings. I use this here on my YouTube channel a lot. I use it with client stuff for little detail and B-roll type shots. This is an amazing sleeper lens. And because it is a macro lens, the minimum focusing distance is really, really shallow, which means you can get really close to stuff and still keep it in focus, which allows you to get really creative with the way you capture some of your shots. Now, no matter which one of these lenses you decide to pick up, or if you decide to pick up one, two, or any of these, all of these come down to what is the most important lens for your shots. Now, one thing that you'll notice with these lenses is that most of them are prime lenses. And what prime lenses means is that they basically don't zoom. Now, the 70 to 200 is my only zoom lens that I use with this, and that is because anytime I'm using it handheld, it is nice to be able to zoom in and out instead of having to move around as much but most of my lenses are going to be prime. And the reason for that is when it comes to prime lenses, they are just always sharper. When it comes to having a sharp lens and also something that can shoot at a really low aperture, which allows you to get more light in and have a very shallow depth of field, you're only gonna be able to get that with prime lenses. Most of the time when you're looking at cinema lenses as well, a lot of them are going to be primes as well. As someone like myself who's now actually looking to invest into some prime cinema lenses, is getting used to one, pulling focus with these types of lenses, but also being able to compose my shots properly depending on which focal length I decide to go with. You know, I don't think there's anything wrong with zoom lenses. I absolutely believe that they have their place. If you're someone who's traveling a lot or you're someone who's maybe on a budget and you're just trying to get the most focal range for your dollar, then yes, absolutely go with zoom lenses. However, if you can and if it is possible for you, especially in your shooting conditions, to be able to shoot on primes, trust me, there is nothing like it. The shots are so crisp and the detail is so amazing that you can only truly get that with primes. But there you have it guys, those are the lenses that I use with my Blackmagic Pocket Cinema camera. Let me know what you guys use down below. Also, if you have any questions about any of these lenses or you wanna check any of these out, I'll have links to everything down below so you can check out the prices on them and decide which ones you wanna go with. But one super helpful tip that I really wanna leave with you guys is don't be afraid of buying used gear. Most of these lenses, like the 50, 
and the 100 and the 35 these were all used when i purchased them so that can just go to show you guys that if you are willing to buy a used lens you can get some really awesome lenses at some really inexpensive prices compared to their new counterparts so if you are interested in any of this let me know leave comments down below and i'll catch you guys in the next video peace i think that whole last sentence rhymed i'm pretty sure it was not intentional.